I bought this grappling hook uh, several years ago when I moved to Canada. Um, I got it from West Spur at the time. I don't know if they still sell them. Don't ask me who sells them because I don't know. There was this one and there was one made by Rock Exotica which was almost the same but a little bit bigger and uh, there was some kind of screw adjustment on the Rock Exotica one as I recall which meant you could op you could lock um, closed the actual claws or hooks whatever you want to call them so uh, I made a video with this some years ago just doing one transfer into a tree uh, the video was absolutely shite looking at it now it was really poor kind of resolution on the camera which was a top of the range helmet camera at the time doesn't look like it now so um, I was using this uh, for the last two days from time to time and uh, throughout the time I've owned it it's not it wasn't cheap by the way it was over it might have been over two hundred dollars but it's been an invaluable tool for transferring into trees which I do quite a lot of now remember this is really important this is not and should never be used as a primary or sole anchor point or tying point you know it's not life support it's to maneuver you from A to B but never rely on it on its own not this or not any other kind of hook it's, it's not what they're designed for they're only supposed to move you assist you in moving from A to B you should always be tied in somewhere else I am going to show you some footage in a minute I'm not just going to keep talking all the way through. I'll show you a little bit of footage in a minute. So I think the center core is steel and the the claws are aluminum. It has two points of attachment, one on the top, which if you were not using it and hanging on your belt, you would kind of clip it so it hangs like that. It's not going to snag anything. If you hung it the other way on your belt, and the claws open up and would be jamming and snagging on things. So, um, yeah, very solid construction. It's done a lot of work, this one, and uh, never had an issue with it. Never lost it, thankfully, as well. So I attach mine to this 10 millimeter line. I have, a, like, a VT configuration set up I think the lines about 35 feet or something I keep it in a bag I know a lot of guys tend to wrap the line around and hang it up that way I sort of prefer to put things in bags even though this bag's a little bit small but because I spent money on it I've been persevering and stuffing it in there but it really I should have a little bit of a bigger bag than this don't think you can see it's not that big this carabiner, um, uh, you could tie your line directly to the eye. I tend to have a carabiner in there permanently in case it gets jammed and then I, if I tug on it, it can sometimes help propel the, uh, the hook and free it if it gets snagged in the wrong place. So the way this, the most effective way to use this, especially in uh, conifers, which uh, are like the dominant tree in where where we live here in uh, on Vancouver Island, and we're often working in what used to be forests, and now they're like little kind of groups of trees that were left, parts of the forest that were left, and how you know the rest may have been clear cut and. and houses put in between so we often working in groups of trees together and if the trees are you know they're getting up their second growth up to 140 150 at times um, 
you want to be and with thinning and pruning or whatever it's can save you a lot of time if you can transfer in between trees or tree tops or what have you but these are very effective in um, hardwoods as well they're just slightly different way of using them perhaps but in I suppose the most effective way to use them and the opportunity that you're always looking for is to actually throw the hook where I should point out that when you throw this um, when you throw the hook as soon as it hits an object if it you know if you're trying to throw it through a crotch or a group of branches it may travel through the air something like that but when it deflects into a crotch the uh, the claws fold up so what you're looking to do is throw it over a limb let's say this is the limb is so you've gone over that limb and then it goes turns upside down the hooks open up and then you want to let your line run underneath and snag the limb underneath so the limb that you threw over is essentially a redirect you want to snag something that's below that and you can drop your line down to whatever limb below you think you're going to get the best purchase on so the reason for this is um, it takes some of the pressure off the limb that you you sort of spreading the weight a little bit and as well as this, because um, this limb becomes a redirect, the one you've gone over on top, then as you start to transfer and the line angle, you're coming in on this line and it changes, the orientation of the hook or the claw remains the same because it's not on this top limb. If you were on the top limb, the orientation would change as you began to transfer across which may be okay or it might not be best so you can throw it at and, and isolate a specific limb um, if you can get two claws over the limb that might be preferable might give you an extra margin of safety you can also let's say this is uh, a crotch you could pierce it through a crotch and kind of jam it that way depending on how many how many branches there are um, it really is up to your judgment and experience what is safe what isn't you do have to consider though if you're isolating a limb or you're just going straight into a crotch like so then is there a you know if, if you've thrown um, from A to B let's say you're kind of horizontal where you've thrown from when you start to, to traverse across or transfer across if the line angle changes if you anticipate the line angle to change is anything going to change in the cross in the crotch is it possible that you know something might come loose kind of unlikely but it's it's always worth considering and remember too that when you get close to the limb you may be something like this so is, is, that, is that safe that was my fault why it came off not blaming the tool here but it's you know it, it, it kind of takes a bit of, worth kind of practicing with on the ground first just to get the feel of it but wherever you can try to go over the limb as was the first example and then snag the limb snag the branch below so always gather up as much line as you're going to need to get from A to V and throw it with the hook.
don't keep it back in your other hand actually throw all the line with the hook it just travels better that way otherwise you're sort of dragging the line instead of throwing it notice here as well I'm throwing pretty much horizontal it's much easier to throw horizontal or to throw down even better as opposed to trying to aim upwards which is um, more difficult to get accuracy as well as that you can't actually throw as far so if you've got a foot ascender you know if you're um, not wearing spurs if you're not doing removals whatever and you're using a foot ascender there's every chance you will be if you're doing tall trees then use it by all means it does take a lot of the strain off your uh, hands because you've got a lot more strength in your legs the more line you have obviously below your ascender the easier it's going to fall through also helps in that sense to have a thin line I'm using a I think this is a 10 millimeter line First thing you do when you reach your target tree is to put your lanyard around it straight away. Don't get distracted with anything else and then you can regroup and, and, and get your bearings. Notice there that as soon as the tension came off the grapple hook line it dropped down so it's no longer giving me any support. Keep in mind as you transfer nearer to your target tree and get further away from your original tying point that you are side loading the original tying point ever more. So make sure you choose your tying point carefully, not just one that's safe enough to hang underneath but one that is okay to side load. So here we are um, shortening the top of a dead alder which was coming down, uh, she was about 70 feet, I'm able to jam the claw into a crotch as we talked about earlier and the tree was bendy enough that I could almost pull it towards me as much as I was transferring into it. Um, I was probably able to move the top of that tree, you know, 10 feet or more and then reach out and do some cutting in midair. So I should point out that I'm not associated with the manufacturer of this in any way. Um, I don't even know they are. Um, I would assume 
this was made out here and the Pacific Northwest somewhere may even be Canada I don't know I got this from West Spur um, there's no sticker on it uh, maybe there was at one time but I don't know I'm sure they're still out there being made and it's the real thing if you're serious about traversing in between trees if it's something that you have to do then um, this is the real thing it's not a gimmick it's not one of those arborist shiny kind of gimmicky branded gadgets that um, people run out and buy and hang it on their saddle and then never really use it but it, it looks cool kind of hung there this is the style of throwing hook preferred by forestry workers um, now those boys probably do more um, transferring and grappling in between trees over the course of a week than what most arborists do over a whole year so they know a thing or two about you know what makes practical sense so um, anyway I think that's enough I hope this is better than the last grapple hook video that I made all those years ago certainly couldn't be any worse so thanks for watching until next time